Hi, this is Cindy Clark from PACB TV, and today I have with us Phil Sterling from the Ballinsville Community Band, and Phil is going to tell us a little bit about how the band got started, uh, what they've been doing with COVID, uh, what they plan on doing, and how long, you know, the general information about the Ballinsville Community Band. Thanks very much for coming, and Phil, Certainly. I appreciate it. I do Certainly. appreciate it. So let's start at the beginning. How did this all start, the community band? Well, I was teaching music, teaching band at uh, Durgy Junior High, and I had an eighth grade student, remember his name was Kyle, and he was a little unsure about signing up for band the next year. And he said, what am I going to do when I graduate high school with playing my instrument? And I said, well, there are some community groups, or you might find a college group, or just play for your own enjoyment. He didn't sign up for band for the next year. And I said, well, I can't just do my job and doesn't matter what happens. I, I want people to continue. So I uh, had put the word out, the local theater guild, uh, knew some musicians. I was walking through a music store downtown Syracuse and I heard somebody talking about getting her flute repaired and I whoosh, <laughs> went right over to her and said, oh, I'm looking at starting the band and so forth. So it's December, I believe the 6th, uh, 1979, we had our first meeting at Durgy Junior High, and we had over 30 people, um, all experiences. Uh, it, one fella just passed away, uh, Mick Jenkins, uh, oh, yeah. was a beginner. He, uh, his twin boys were in my band my first year at El when I was teaching at Eldon. And um, he said, oh, I'd like to learn an instrument. He never had a chance to play. So he learned the saxophone. Uh, so we met, and I and Dan Vertries, he was uh, a music person from the area. He did some composing, conducting, and so forth. And uh, he and I ran the band for the first year or so. We had our first concert on March 4th, uh, 1980. March 4th is the only day of the year that's a command. March 4th. <laughs> so anyways, uh, I always laugh when I hear about the 4th of May, you know, May the 4th mm -hmm. be with, you know, so, and Pi Day and all those things. Well, we had it first, anyways. So. Fast forward 40 some years, uh, the, in uh, 2020, we were celebrating our 40th year of being together. We had a nice dinner down at Tassone's, and three months later we had our last concert. It was March 11th, and I wasn't even there to conduct it. I was attending a concert down city, and uh, the other conductor, Colleen Daly, had done the performance, and a week later, everything shut down. Yeah. So uh, we have hadn't done anything until last June, June of 2021. They lifted the restrictions, and we started practicing at Grace Episcopal Church, which was one of our original rehearsal spots, uh, and we were ready to do a concert. August, mid-August, mid I think it was the 11th also, and that was the day that the county shut everything down, said you have to wear a mask, and of course playing, you can't really play an <laughs> no. instrument with a mask on, even no, though no, some, no. some of the schools do that, and I, it was also 90 degrees outside, so we've canceled concerts when it's that hot, it's like nobody enjoys it, especially the band, so... Uh, we haven't done anything since then. We haven't had rehearsals. It looks like we'll be able to start up again after Easter. So uh, hopefully we'll get back on track and uh, be able to have rehearsals and get going again. But uh, if anybody's interested, they can read about the band's past on our webpage. It's uh, www.baldwinsvillecommunityband, all three words strung together dot org and uh like i say that that at least will keep you up to date on what we're doing okay that's so, good yeah. now in the past years where did you play after you you know you started in what 79 79 where did you play well I mean, 
we pretty much practiced at the schools that I was teaching in. We first started at Durgi. Um, I mentioned I was at Eldon, uh, Eldon and Van Buren my first year teaching. And then the next three years was Eldon and Durgi. And then I taught at three elementary schools. One of them was Reynolds School, yeah. so we practiced there. And uh, eventually I moved on to Ray School, so we moved our rehearsals there. And we, we were there for 20-some years anyways, until I retired in 2010. And then it's like, well, we have to move our equipment out. Uh, we had stored stuff at our announcer's home. She had a condo in uh, Village Green, and uh, she's legally blind. She couldn't drive, so her garage was open. So we had 10 file cabinets worth of music mm -hmm. and a few percussion instruments at timpani. Uh, and she was gracious enough to let us store things there. She passed away three or four years ago, and then we were really in a quandary. What are we going to do? And I talked to several people, and we ended up getting a little bit of space in the basement of the library where we store everything now, which is a godsend because we, you know, we don't have a, a yearly budget of, of any money. We get some donations, but uh, you know, we couldn't afford to, to rent a place to, to put stuff. So, uh, uh, and like I say, since COVID, we've been practicing at Grace Episcopal Church, and uh, I've hesitated to contact the schools because I'm sure they're busy enough just keeping the building clean for the students mm -hmm. I know and the regular saying, activity. So it, it's a little easier at one of the schools at Grace uh, because we practice in the basement. Um, we have a couple of people who are... Uh, vertically challenged in that they 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 have trouble with stairs, but there is an elevator, so that that helps. But it's just more to set up and tear down. But but we'll we'll get by. Now you have actually have concerts and performances in the community. Oh, yeah. I mean, what where do you do? Is it just in the schools or where? Well, we found over the years that we pretty much stick to the Baldwinsville area. Um, we had done back in the 80s when the, we had the Oktoberfest. We did a concert there every year. And we did some concerts in the schools. We would do for um, Memorial Day, for Veterans Day. We usually do a Christmas concert. We do concerts at the malls, like uh, back in the day at uh, Destiny. And uh, I think we even did concerts at Tri County Mall uh, and then Great Northern. Um, we don't charge for concerts. We take donations if somebody chooses to. But um, over the years, we did summer concerts at the beginning down at Mercer Park. Uh, and it was a beautiful setting on the gazebo there. But uh, we had to lug chairs from one of the churches, or I think the fire department donated uh, time to bring chairs out and so forth. But over the years, we decided it was easiest to be at some of the churches uh, because a lot of our audience are the mature adults. I like that say, word. I like know. that a lot. Because we could be outdoors if it was nice weather or indoors if it was uh, raining or something. Because for many years, it was, uh, well, we're going to do the concert unless it rains. I remember we did one concert over at the... Um, schoolhouse museum we were out on the lawn there mm -hmm. and I, w I was conducting and I was facing west and I could just see the dark clouds coming and coming and quickly coming so we finished a song and I said we're done pack up it's going to rain and within one minute it was a deluge so we wow. just we just hightailed it out but uh, it's it's hard uh, because uh, people a lot of times don't know what a concert band is and they'll read about us or something, and they'll say, well, how big is your band? And I say, well, we have 50 to 60 members. And they're like, oh, they were thinking like a rock and roll band of four people. Right, right. And it's like, no. And so it's it can be loud. I remember playing at uh, Canton Woods one time, and people were literally holding their ears because it it's loud. 
Uh, so a lot. Of, it's nice to do an outdoor concert too. It's just that old timey kind of thing where you know you. It's a relaxed atmosphere. People can have a conversation, and it's not interrupting. You know, it, it, it's not a formal presentation. Um, but we try to mix up the the tunes that we do. I've over the years had a standard ten piece concert. And we'd usually begin and end with a march, because bands play marches, mm -hmm. and do some Broadway medleys and uh, maybe light classical pieces. And on occasion, we did some more advanced music, um, high school and college type literature. We had a chance to play several times for the state uh, music conventions and um, played up at Syracuse University several times. Um, but as one of our founding members said, you know, let's, let's make sure that we have fun. Absolutely. So, Absolutely. So that's, I that's agree with that. kind of the key. Well, now you, do you, you say you're going to be starting up hopefully around after Easter. After uh, rehearsals. Easter, yeah. Do you have any commitments locally for playing? Or? Well, uh, and again, i got to refer back to Grace Church. Um, They've been very helpful and reached out to us uh, during the pandemic, pandemic uh, offering you know, if we needed a rehearsal spot, which we did, and, oh, can we do a concert for them? And, oh, yeah, we're, that's, that was the plan. So uh, we already have a tentative date. Uh, I don't even want to say it in case something <laughs> in case it doesn't changed. happen, right. Don't jinx Again, it. Again, I don't yeah, jinx it. Yeah. So, but um, my hope is that uh, once we get back rehearsing, within a month or so, we'll do the concert that we never got to perform. And uh, it was, we titled it Music Around the World, and we had uh, pieces that were, like we had an Argentinian tango, and a German polka, and um, Irish uh, Danny Boy, mm -hmm. and and a couple of American uh, tunes. Um, so I was hoping, oh, as soon as we get back together, we'll do that and bill it again as, here's the trip around the world that you didn't get to take <laughs> over the last two years, and... Uh, hopefully looking forward that we'll be able to do more concerts again. We used to do about 10 concerts a year, 10 to 15. And now we found that in the summer, uh, people are away. And what we do is we pretty much practice through the year. And then right from Memorial Day on, we'll go every other week. We'll have a concert. And then the next week will be a quick rehearsal we try to in the summer we just go for an hour during the regular rest of the year we practice for an hour and a half um, 7 to 8 30 and uh, again we that evolved over time I think the very first we rehearsed from 7 o'clock to 9 30 and we'd take a break in the middle and then it seemed like well at the break people would leave so it's well, like, let's just, we cut the time down and down and down to it. We found an hour and a half is good. And I, I play in another band up in Minetto. And an hour and a half is good, no interruption. And uh, then we're done. So it, it works out Well, that makes well. sense. Yeah. yeah, it does. Yeah. It does. Because so. like you said, bottom line is you want to have fun. Have a good time. If it's fun. more like a, a job or whatever. Yeah, yeah. So what do you have as far as, like, what do you need to join and what type of expenses are involved in something like this? I mean, I don't know any of that stuff. Right. Well, for the most part, most everybody already has played. Um, we have had some beginners. I mentioned our announcer. Um, she was a beginner. She had never had a chance, went to parochial schools, and they didn't, they didn't offer a, a, a band program. And so she learned the flute and took lessons with one of our members who was another music teacher. Um, so we encourage anybody who's played before, um, as far as a beginner, like the band I play with up in Minetto, they're, uh, part of the New Horizons, uh, music groups, which are specifically designed to encourage beginners as adults, people who never had a chance to play. 
Um, for our band members, we we try to encourage them. They probably should be able to play at the level of a junior high school student, but um, I always encourage people jump right in. And, you know, the skills will come back, and you'll advance. Uh, and as adults, most of us have learned, you know, when there's a difficult passage that you can't play, that's when you adjust the reed on the clarinet or the saxophone, or you empty out the spit out of your trumpet or trombone, <laughs> you know. And uh, and again, one of the nice things is with a large uh, group, 50 players or, or so, um, you don't have to worry about, oh, I'm the only one playing this part, you know. Uh, if I can't play it, somebody else will. And we have, we have some very talented musicians. I'm going to guess we have about eight people who are music teachers or semi-professionals. Um, and uh, again, people of all abilities and all ages. One of the nice things is we are starting to get some younger uh, players in their 20s and early 30s which I was always worried about. I mean, as the band grays up, um, this kind of gray, uh, <laughs> you know, I, 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 I want to make sure that the band continues, you know, that, uh, yes. that, it, that it isn't, well, this is just for me, and when I'm finished with it, the band will fold up. That's why we have uh, Colleen Daly is, uh, we co-conduct, we don't, we don't have a formal title. I used to say she was the associate conductor, but we pretty much share everything equally. So, uh, And like I say, she's the, she's the last one to conduct a full concert. <laughs> so, Now, these, so. most of these people, I would say, are pretty dedicated. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, a number of them play in several groups. I mentioned I, I play in a band up in Mineto and do a little bit of conducting to, to help out. Um, but some, there's, there are community bands, I have to think of the days of the week. Monday is Phoenix, Tuesday is Lafayette, Wednesday is Baldinsville and Mineto, Thursday is Fulton, Friday is uh, Skinny Atlas, uh, oh, and Lincourt is Thursday also. So there, there are a number of groups, but when we got started, I think there was a band in Liverpool, and that was about it. So you're kind so, of on the cutting edge in the beginning. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And it, it, it was very rewarding to see that uh, we had some members. One fellow played trumpet, moved South Carolina or something like that, and there was no community band. And he went around and found a music teacher and said, we should start this, and they did. And some former students who have also begun groups, so... Well, I've, I've seen you, and I've, I enjoy, and I, would, I look forward to seeing you again. Yeah. Now, do you rely, is it strictly donations? Is yeah. that what it is? Yeah. Um, we have membership dues. Um, I can't even remember how much it is. We haven't collected them in a couple of years because when the, the pandemic hit, and we just said... Everything shut just, down. Yeah. yeah. But um, I think our dues were 10 or $20 a year, and... Uh, you know, we always say, you know, if you can donate something, if it's an organization, some places will pass the hat. Canton Woods will do that all the time, so they'll, they'll uh, pass the hat. Um, our only expense is really we have insurance on our equipment and liability insurance. Most every place, like uh, practicing in the schools, we have to submit a certificate of insurance mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. just for liability. Right. And uh, when we played at the malls, we had to do the same thing. They, mm -hmm. they want to make sure that, that nobody's going to sue them for something that happened when the band was there. But um, so that's a couple hundred dollars a year. And then purchasing music is our only real expense f for the most part. Um, a band arrangement nowadays runs anywhere from 50 to $200, depending on the the music and the copyright owner right right. so uh <clears throat> but and then we have members that donate uh somebody just before the pandemic had donated money to purchase a uh, collection of stephen foster tunes okay you know so some americana 
and uh, from time to time people will just say, oh, I really like this song. When we first started, uh, within our f first couple of years, we didn't have a lot of inventory, and it's, it's awkward to borrow music. There are some lending libraries, but it's... It's awkward because if you lose something, uh, what are you going to do? So we did a command performance, and I put out the word that if you'd like to donate a piece of music, whatever it is, we'll play it at this concert. My parents donated a piece. My cousin who was living here donated a piece. Uh, one of the drummers donated the 1812 Overture huh. and was like, oh, boy, are we going to be able to play this? And we did, so uh, we played a wide variety of pieces. We even did a, a solo uh, concert, and I think it was 1982, and uh, various members of the band played solos with band accompaniment, and I played Rhapsody in Blue. Oh, oh. And I, I bought a blue tuxedo just for the <laughs> occasion. Powder blue. Oh, I like the look. I, 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 no, don't, I like the look. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think I have a picture or recording of it, but uh, it was interesting anyways. I'm sure it was. Yeah. I'm sure it was. Well, I look forward to, to, see, to seeing some, listening to some of this music, because I have seen it in the past. Yeah. It was very yeah. impressive. And I, I presume that there's, once you get rocking and rolling again, that you will put that out there. Oh, yeah. You will yeah. publicize it. Yeah. And let the community know, because I'm sure the community would like to see the community band, how, I mean, we haven't seen it in a couple of years, but from personal listening experience, they're fabulous. Yeah. And like he said, to, to put it in a nice setting, in, a, in the nice weather, it takes you back. It's just a very nice time. They're very good. The music is good. And it's just a real community event. And a lot of, I mentioned that we played a lot of the churches. Uh, a number of them have uh, jumped on the bandwagon, if you will, and provided uh, refreshments. Um, at St. Augustine's, they always had cookies and lemonade and stuff for the audience. And then they always made sure to save some for the band members for afterwards. <laughs> but I think the Methodist Church, we had uh, strawberry sundaes or something like that. And, you know, most, most all of them, uh, Presbyterian Church I mentioned and... Uh, uh, Grace Episcopal, they'll have something for the audience as well as the band members as a, kind of a thank you. It's, yeah, it's just a, it's an evening out. It's, yeah, it's a yeah. nice, it's a nice event. It always has been and I've always enjoyed it myself. So you asked about other events. I did get a call from uh, Linda and Tom Ross about uh, Memorial Day. And so uh, are we going to have anybody around? I said, it looks like we probably will have some people um, we always did a big uh, performance down at the cemetery after the parade. Um, we've scaled it back over the years, and so this year Memorial Day is on a Monday, and uh, as far as I recall, the plans are to do the parade in the morning. Mm -hmm. I think and, so, I think you're uh, right. Then like 11 o'clock down at the cemetery. And if, if <clears throat> people haven't been to the cemetery um, ceremony, it's very nice. They have uh, usually have three speakers, uh, students from the high school. One does the Gettysburg Address, mm -hmm. one does Flanders Fields, right. one does Logan's Orders. And the band usually plays a couple of patriotic pieces. Uh, they do a 21-gun salute. <clears throat> and uh, it's, it's about an hour program, but it's very nice. And it's a beautiful setting uh, that they created down there, the... Um, Civil War statue, and again, I'm sure there are people that don't even know about that statue. It used to be in front of the Methodist yes, Church, it did. Yes, and it did. was there yeah. for years. And then they had it refurbished and moved to the cemetery. Uh, and I've seen one other statue like that. Uh, <clears throat> if you go up Route 104 into Mexico, there there's a cemetery right across from the elementary school, and I. I, it, I think it's identical to the one that we have there. I didn't know that. And uh, But anyways, they have a nice park-like setting, and um, it's, just, it's, it's just really nice. It's nice. So. Well, it's, it'll be so good to get back to a sense of normalcy. Yeah. 
where we can all be together and yeah. celebrate in, in our community because there's a lot to be offered here. Yeah. And I look for I look forward to hearing you again. And I want to thank you very much for coming today and spending time with us and reminding us of how things used to be and hopefully how they will be. Now, if people have questions or suggestions or whatever, do they contact you via the oh, yeah. website? Yeah. Okay. Did you want to say that once again? Yeah, it's just one string of words, Baldwinsville Community Band dot org. And uh, my phone number's on there too. If somebody wants to give me a call, I don't mind. Okay. So. Okay. Sounds good. All right. But again, thank you very much. And if you do have questions, please contact Phil on the website that he, he provided with us. And everybody have a wonderful day. Thank you. Thanks.